These pictures weren't taken by some jet-setting socialite. They belong to Avery Campbell, a 24-year-old law student at McGill University. And the best part? For Campbell, almost all of this was pretty much free. There is a huge benefit uh, if you're willing to put in even a small amount of time just you know, once a week, once a day, if, if you really want to go more into it. That, that one has no foreign exchange fee, which is great. That's 2% cash back. That's an American credit card. Few people go more into it than Campbell. He's an expert at collecting reward points through something called manufactured spending. He uses multiple credit cards to collect huge amounts of points, often buying things he doesn't need or even want, and then returning them. And that is exactly what Campbell did through the Royal Canadian Mint. What the Royal Mint was doing is they were, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the ads, um, they used to offer a par coin program. In 2011, the Mint, in a bid to attract new customers, started selling collectible silver coins at par or face value. You could buy a $20 coin for $20 or a $100 coin for $100 and there, was, there were these lovely silver coins. The coins weren't meant for circulation, but they are legal tender. Campbell used his credit card to buy the coins to get the reward points, then he deposited the coins in the bank and used the money in the bank to pay off his credit card. The Mint told CBC News it monitored telephone and online orders and it did detect some concentrated sales, but it says these were never materially significant to its overall program. The Mint had also set household limits on the amount you could buy. But Campbell says he was still able to buy thousands of dollars worth of coins online and grocery bags full of coins in person at the Mint's retail store in Ottawa. It was kind of an after-school after thing to do, just go to the Mint, buy coins and go to the bank. And Campbell may not have been the only one hip to the game. The Mint won't say how many of these collectible coins were returned, saying that information is commercially sensitive. But internal Mint documents provide some insight. In 2013, a total of 25 bank branches returned coins to the Mint. In 2014, 35 banks returned coins. In 2015, the number of banks returning coins to the Mint jumped to 312. It's not clear how much the face value program may have cost the Mint. Besides paying for shipping, the Mint also paid the banks a 2% administration fee. Then there are credit card transaction fees, which are usually paid by the merchant. Someone has to pay for it at the end of the day, and usually it's the seller of the product. And um, other, other purchasers of the product who aren't doing manufacturing spending have to subsidize for people like me. The Mint is one of the few crown corporations that normally generates profits for the government. But it saw a huge drop in revenue in 2016. And one of the reasons for that, the Mint says, was a higher than anticipated return and redemption rate of face value collector coins. It would have been really easy to stop. They did a 4% or a 3% uh, surcharge on the coins. I think coin collectors wouldn't really have cared and that would have stopped the benefit of manufactured spending. On January 1st, 2017, five years after it began, the Mint shut down its face value coin program. But not before Avery Campbell and who knows how many others reap the rewards. Boy, that is a doozy. Uh, we got to bring Aaron Saltzman uh, to join us right now to talk a little bit more about this. And, and Aaron, I understand Avery Campbell was not the first person to do this sort of thing with, with this kind of program? Oh, no, definitely not, Andrew. The American used almost the exact same strategy, and he did it years before Campbell even heard about the Canadian Mint program. His name is Brad Wilson, and in 2007, the U.S. Mint launched its presidential $1 coin program. It wanted to increase the circulation of the coins, you know, to get Americans to switch from dollar bills. So the U.S. Mint started selling these coins in $250 boxes, and offering free shipping. Well, Wilson ended up buying $3 million worth, enough to generate 4 million American Airlines points. The U.S. Mint shut down its program the same year the Canadian Mint started selling face value coins. Right, but, but I guess we all know how that ended. So, <laughs> so if we go back to this idea of manufactured spending, uh, was this program a one of a kind or are there other, other opportunities to do this elsewhere? Well, I can't tell you how many times I talked to people about this story and the first thing they said was, damn, I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> but buying a whole bunch of stuff and taking it back can be against the terms and conditions of some credit cards, some stores don't like it. 
And even if it's not outright fraud, it is definitely against the spirit of reward programs. Now, the other thing about this is if it's done on a large enough scale, it can kind of look like money laundering. So probably best not to try this at home, Andrew. Okay, Aaron Saltzman, quite a story. Thanks for that. You bet.